Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to round a number to a specific number of decimal places in Grasshopper using only Grasshopper components. We won't be using any Python script. I made a previous video where I showed you how to do this using a Python uh, component and in a Python component you have to have a Python script. But in this video we'll be using purely Grasshopper components. And you can see in our example we have set up here that if I change the number of decimal places, that the result updates appropriately. And even though I have this set up as a cluster, uh, it is made up of purely grasshopper components. And I'll show you not only how to uh, set up the grasshopper definition, I'll also show you how to set up the cluster. So if we double click on this, we go into cluster view, and you can see that it is just pure grasshopper components. But all right, let's go ahead and get started. So you might think that Grasshopper would have a, a function that rounds numbers already, and it does. If we go to Mass, uh, then under the Utilities here, there is a rounding uh, component. You can feed your number into that. You have three options, and the top one is called Nearest. Okay, If we feed that in, you can see it's rounding it to 3, and that's because our number is above you know, 2.5 or above. So 2.4 would round to 2, and uh, anything uh, starting from 2.5 and above would round to 3. Now floor, which is the next one here, uh, if we feed that in, that always rounds, it just basically drops everything after the decimal point. So you just get this number here. Whatever this number is, that's what floor will return to you. Ceiling will always round to the next integer up. So even if you have, uh, let's see, uh, 2.1, then you get 3. If you have 2.0, let's see what you get. I don't know. Okay, that gives you 2. 2.0 gives you 2, but anything over that will give you 3. All right? So that's how ceiling works. Of all these three options, nearest, floor, and ceiling, I think nearest is probably what we're closest to what we're looking for. But all of these round to whole numbers, and that's not what we want, right? We want to round to a specific specific number of decimal places. I'm just going to hit Control Z here to get back my, there we go, 2.5867. Uh, so what can we do to get around this limitation of our rounding uh, component here? Well, what we can do is multiply uh, this number by uh, a number like, say, for instance, 10. We'll start off with 10. So if we wanted to round to a single uh, decimal place, then we would use 10 to do that. I'm going to just copy this panel here uh, so that I'll get these nice, I've already got the font set up with these nice big bold numbers here that hopefully are easier to see on the video. And let me go ahead and remove the name from there. Okay, so we've got 10 and let's get a multiplication node. We'll feed this into the top and 10 into the bottom. And uh, let me grab another panel. Well, we'll use this one. I'll copy and paste it. And we'll just feed the result into that, right? Okay, so we're getting 25.867, which makes sense, right? We're just moving the decimal point over one uh, over here, right? Now, if we feed that into here, you can see what we get is 26. That's almost what we want, right? But what we really want is 2.6. So this is almost what we need. It's just that the decimal point is in the wrong place. To get the decimal po point back into the right place, what we need to do is divide this number by this number. So really, we're going to divide the result coming out of the rounding box here. So let's go to maths and grab a division component. We'll feed uh, this number into there. Remember to use nearest and not floor or ceiling. And then we will divide that by the very same number that we multiplied by in the first place. If we feed that into our results panel over here, uh, you can see we get exactly the number that we want. 2.5867 rounded out to one decimal place. We get 2.6. Well, what if we wanted to round out to two decimal places? Well, we just need to change 10 to 100. So I'll just edit this to say 100. And now you see we're rounding out to two decimal places. If we wanted to round out to three decimal places, we could uh, change that out to 1,000. And if this is all that you needed to do, uh, then you're done. Uh, you just need to decide on the number of decimal places that you want. And then if you want one decimal place, choose 10. If you want two, 
uh, you know, basically the number of zeros is the number of decimal places, right? So one followed by the number of zero, the same number of zeros that you want for decimal places. So we want to round to three decimal places, we need one followed by three zeros. If we want to round to two decimal places, we need one followed by two zeros, see? If we want one decimal place, we need one followed by one zero, and so forth. That's the pattern, okay? Uh, but with this method, uh, you, at any time that you want to change the number of decimal places, you have to double click in here and change it from 10 to 100 or to 1,000 or whatever. And that could be fine in a lot of situations, but what if you wanted to change the number of decimal places with a slider or something like that? Well, we can definitely do that, but we just need to think a little more carefully about what is going on here. So what is happening is that we are multiplying uh, 10 by the to the power we're not multiplying we're uh, we're doing 10 to the power of the number of decimal places that we want so if we want uh, two decimal places that's 10 to the second or 10 squared which is 100 if we want three decimal places that would be 10 to the third which would be 1000 if we want one decimal place that's 10 to the one which is 10 right if we want no decimal places that's 10 to the zero which is zero uh, so, or I'm sorry, which is one. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, now that we know that, let's kind of put that into practice here and see what happens. Okay, so uh, let's switch this uh, from 100. We'll just go ahead and write uh, 10. And let's disconnect this from everything. And let's grab, go to maths and grab a power component. All right, 10 is going to go into the top uh, because we're, it's gonna be 10 to some power and so the power goes in the B slot here. Uh, that power is the number of decimal places that we want. We're gonna go ahead and make a slider for that. So I'm gonna use the space bar to make the slider. I'm gonna hit the space bar. We're gonna type in the lower limit that we want for the slider, which is gonna be zero, and then the upper limit that we want for the slider, which uh, is gonna be three, but we need to separate the lower and upper limits with the less than symbol. So zero less than three, hit enter and that will make a slider that goes from zero to three uh, as whole numbers, okay? So we're just gonna feed this slider into the bottom slot here. And uh, let me kind of squeeze this in a little bit. And let me get another panel. We'll use this one actually. So it'll be nice and big and easy to see. We'll feed the results into that. All right, so we're getting 100 uh, if we uh, go out to two decimal places. If we go out to one, we're getting 10. If we go to zero, we're getting one. And if we go to three, we're getting a thousand. Okay, so let's feed that into here and then also feed that into here and we'll delete this panel. We don't, we don't need that anymore. Okay, so as we change our, our decimal places over here, so if we do two decimal places, we get two decimal places. If we do one decimal place, we get one decimal place. If we do zero decimal places, we get a whole number with no decimal places. All right, so this is, uh, this is the solution right here uh, for, um, for, you know, for rounding numbers all up to a specific number of decimal places. I'm just gonna double click this right here so that it can, uh, I get this little re relay that I can route around that 10 all right, um, let me see if I can fit this stuff on my screen a little bit better. Zoom out, maybe a, a fuzz. Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, so you could actually just stop here. You could also uh, group this all together. Select everything, hit Control G, and group it all together. You could name the group something like rounding, uh, so you can tell what the group does. But I told you in the beginning of the video that I would show you how to make a cluster. So we'll go ahead and do that next. So what I'm gonna do is ungroup everything by right clicking on the group, clicking ungroup. And uh, what we need is to bring in some components here. We need to go to params and we need a, we need a container for our float. This is uh, for this number, our number that has decimal places and that is going to be a float. So if you or you could say the number container, okay? If you hover over it, uh, it's a little hard to say. It says contains a collection of floating point numbers. So that's why I called it a float, okay? So basically this can hold numbers that 
that can have decimal places. They don't have to have decimal places, but they could have decimal places. And we're going to rename this um, unrounded. Okay, so that's going to hold our unrounded number. We'll feed that into there, and then we'll feed from there into wherever that originally went. Okay, so we're going to feed that into there. We're going to grab one here uh, that says integer, contains a collection of integer numbers. That's for whole numbers, and we're going to call that uh, places for decimal places, and we're going to feed our decimal places into that, and then we're going to feed that into wherever uh, it was fed into early, you know, from this uh, slider originally, which is into this relay right here, right? All right, and uh, we need one also for our output. So we are outputting a number that could have decimal places, right? So if we round out to uh, decimal places, we, we can have decimal places. So we need the float container again. Uh, this time we'll call this um, rounded. You can call it anything you want. You don't have to use these names. We'll feed this into uh, that container, and then we'll feed that into our result. Okay, so this is all you need to make a cluster. It's very important that uh, that you set these uh, parameter boxes, or whatever you want to call them, containers, uh, that your inputs go into those, okay, and that your output goes into one as well, and that they're connected to something on each side, okay? So we have uh, these are connected to uh, to inputs coming in, and our output is connected to a panel going out. Okay, so you need to be connected to something, and I'll show you what happens if you're not connected. So I'll turn the I'll disconnect this, and I'll you select everything, and you go to edit and click on cluster. Okay, and that'll make a cluster. But you see how it's torn here? We we can get no output out of it. And that's because we weren't connected to anything on the output. So I'm going to hit Control Z. We'll just connect to this uh, panel here. We'll then select everything again, just like we did before. We'll go to Edit, click on Cluster, and there we go. We now have a cluster. And the inputs and uh, outputs have the names that we gave to those uh, uh, parameter containers that we used a few moments ago. So now, we can, uh, I'll just zoom in on this. We can change our number of decimal places on the fly and it'll go ahead and update correctly. And we may be able, yeah, let's disconnect this. Okay, and let's right click on this, click on set integer and we'll say two, maybe click on commit changes. And what this will do is set that as a default value. So if we connect a slider or a panel and enter another number, uh, that will override that. But if we disconnect that, then we get a default value. So if we have nothing connected, it will use uh, the default value that we assign to it. So it, right now it's rounding out to two decimal places because we have set the places with this uh, set integer here. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is uh, how you can round out to a specific number of decimal places using purely grasshopper components and also how you can uh, take that large group of components and turn them into a cluster. And that, that concludes this video. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see all of you in future videos.